welcome to Restaurant Rewind. You know, we haven't done a video for a little bit now, and I'm excited to get back to it. And I'm excited that you're here. And I'm excited for another reason, to, uh, really a couple more reasons as well. One is that we're going to change the format a little bit. One of the questions that I often get asked is how I get the information that I get to put into these videos. And I thought that it would be cool if we just walk through how I get the videos, the websites that I use, the sources, um, and how I kind of compile everything together. And I thought we would just do this one together. And then you tell me what you think. If you like this format, then I'll continue to do it this way. And uh, I just thought it'd be cool to kind of bring you alongside and just kind of dive in together and see what we can find out. The other thing that I'm excited about on this particular video is because I've had this kind of in the hopper for a long time because uh, Bonanza and Ponderosa are like uh, twin sisters almost. And we'll explain that relationship here in a little bit. But I put a lot of time in it, Bonanza, myself. I started when I was 16 bussing tables in my hometown of Decatur, Illinois. And I worked my way into management. And uh, honestly, I learned a lot about, I really learned a lot of foundational things that I really attribute to my time at Bonanza that is really, that really kind of, prepared me. It's the foundational learning uh, that I was able to attain and build off of throughout my career. Um, I learned about customer service. I learned about teamwork. I learned about systems theory. I learned about, you know, what it's like when things get really busy and how to adjust your pace. And I learned about how to take orders. I learned about how to uh, uh, manage people and, you know, payroll and, uh, inventory, bookkeeping, and, and just the whole thing, everything that goes around the restaurant industry, I really owe to my time at Bonanza. And so uh, I wanted to kind of capture some of that today. And I also want to take you through the process uh, of just exploring and trying to dig up some more information. And let's just sort of uh, see where it goes. So you might recall, um, Many of you, hopefully, that's why you clicked on this video, is that there you might recognize a couple of these pictures. Uh, this one being Ponderosa Steakhouse. This is a an older version, uh, probably late '60s, early '70s. Uh, they they kept this look for quite some time, actually, into the uh, into probably the early '90s, <clears throat> and then they started to put the uh, well. We'll look at some pictures here, but but they started to kind of make this a big sort of mural or a, a big picture and just sort of made it look a little newer and fresher, but I still kind of like the old look myself. We'll take a look at how Ponderosa started and uh, you know, how many locations they had, where they started, you know, where they ended up, how they ended up uh, kind of coupled with Bonanza and just see how that all plays out. Um, the other one that we'll look at is obviously Bonanza. And uh, let's see, let's just click into this one right here. You can kind of see a picture of it. And you know, actually, most of these pictures that you see of Bonanza, the outside, you can really tell a Bonanza building because of, you know, you know me, I'm big into architecture. Uh, but these are very... Uh, I mean, these are typical. You can see that it has kind of a barn style built build out with where these kind of kind of uh, angled off at the at the ends here. Very, very typical of a of an early Bonanza build out. Um, and these buildings lasted forever, and they were obviously repurposed for other things. And you can still see them out there. Uh, same goes really with the. Uh, with the Ponderosa buildings. We've got one, uh, I live in uh, Springfield, Illinois now, and uh, we've got, uh, unfortunately our Bonanza building was torn down years ago, but our Ponderosa building um, still exists. And uh, you can still tell, even though it, it had had a, a bit of a, 
uh, build out, you can still tell that it's uh, the same building. But anyway, we will get to that as well. Now, why are these two connected in the first place? Well, they're connected. <laughs> they were, they're connected through the TV series Bonanza uh, that started in 1959, and we'll take a look at that. So we can see there's the kind of the patriarch, Lauren Green. I know Roberts, you might recall him from uh, Dr. John M.D. later with a big beard and he was bald now. Let me back up just one second because you're going to want to remember his name. So Dan Blocker, is, uh, he played Hoss on the series. And Dan is actually the one that started the Bonanza, uh, the first Bonanza. And we'll talk about that in a second. Might remember, remember Michael Landon from Little House on the Prairie. Okay, very good. So that is Bonanza. And um, one of the things, this is probably a good time to point out, one of the websites that I go to uh, uh, usually early on when I start researching a, a restaurant is I'll go to Wikipedia and I know there's all kinds of, uh, you, you know, attitudes and opinions about Wikipedia. Um, and, and the truth of the matter is, is there's some really good information out there and there is some not so good information out there. You have to really take some of it with a grain of salt. Um, and you have to, when you're doing research, there are times when you just have to prove stuff out. Anyway, this is a this is a particular page on the Bonanza TV series, and it talks a little bit about it. Um, it started in 1959, and it ran until 1973, and it uh, had four so 14 seasons. That's a good long run, 432 episodes. That is quite a few. I used to watch this uh, watch you know reruns when I was a kid. Um, uh, that was all pretty much in syndication by that time. Um, but you can see here, it's got all the characters that we saw, you know, on the intro and there's Dan Blocker. And if we actually click into Dan Blocker, um, we can actually do a quick search here. Let's see. Let's do it this way. Let's search for steak. And you can see that it comes up uh, in 1963, Blocker started and received partial ownership in a successful chain of Bonanza Steakhouse restaurants. Ponderosa Steakhouses started in 1965. And they mention that because now they're very, they started off as two different chains. And then they sort of uh, came together again back in the uh, uh, late eighties. And then um, they kind of had been branded separately for a while. And now they're kind of branded together and we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but we can click right into that. And of course it takes us right to the Ponderosa and Bonanza Steakhouses and everything they do. They even share a website. So, um, they, they brand everything together and the branding is becoming a little more uh, uniform throughout. Like one could have the Ponderosa name or the Bonanza name and, and now you really wouldn't know much as far as the difference uh, from the type of food and, and all of that sort of thing. Bonanza was known for having, uh, in the in the early 80s, they started what they called the Fresh Tastics Food Bar, and it was a huge salad bar. You might remember it had all kinds of, not just salads, but it had hot foods, uh, other cold foods. It had everything you can think of on there. Um, I don't recall Ponderosa ever having a big, huge salad bar like that. I think theirs was a little more scaled back. Um when I was a kid, we went to Bonanza a lot more often, but uh, we did go to Ponderosa. We had both uh, in our in our town, the town I grew up in, and uh, 
but anyway, these are, um, you can see here what's interesting about this, and this is what I was saying about some of the information is, is that they have them kind of linked together, but here it says that they were founded in 1965. Well, as we've already discovered, that is a little bit off because Bonanza started in 63, Ponderosa started in 65. So let's kind of take a look here at some of what they've got down as the history. And this is directionally pretty spot on. So Dan Blocker, who played uh, Hoss Courtright, uh, started the Bonanza Steakhouse chain. Um, there were some other people involved with that, I believe, but he was kind of a key player. Uh, the first one opened up in Westport, Connecticut. Now, that is an interesting tidbit because you would almost think that something like this would start, you know, maybe in Texas or, you know, somewhere in the south just because, you know, the ranching and, and all of that sort of thing. Um, I wouldn't have picked Westport, Connecticut as the birthplace of Bonanza. Um, the Wiley brothers, Sam and Charles, uh, they were, uh, they got into a lot of other restaurants uh, over the years too. And we'll probably talk a little bit more about them and if not in this video and other videos, but um, they essentially bought the, the chain three years after it started. So in around 66, and that was a pivotal year uh, for the chain uh, because it was just sort of, I was kind of floundering a little bit. Um, and then when they bought it, they were able to put money and experience and all of that into it. And then it ended up growing to about 600 restaurants by 1989. And I can tell you, I started working at Bonanza in 1986. And if you'll stick around, I'm going to show you a video from 1989 where I was actually working at Bonanza uh, in Decatur, Illinois. And so um, if you hang around long enough, I will show that to you. Um, you don't want to miss that. Trust me. <laughs> so um, they basically sold it to uh, Metro Media. Um, and, and I'll be honest, that was kind of the downfall Um it was a slow downfall, but uh, downfall nevertheless. Metro Media has been through a lot of uh, kind of reinventing themselves. And uh, essentially, they, um, we'll get into this a little bit more, but they really, um, they seem to struggle a lot uh, with different, different things. They, 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 I don't know, Bonanza really started to kind of decline about that time. And uh, let's, we'll pop back over to, we'll take a look at Ponderosa here, and then we'll pop back over to um, Bonanza and talk about kind of current state. So in 1965, Dan Lasseter, Norm Weiss, and uh, Charles Kleps, they founded Ponderosa in Kokomo, Indiana. Another somewhat surprising location to start a restaurant like this. Um, and then it kind of points out here that they moved their headquarters to Dayton, Ohio in 71. Um, they mentioned some things here about Canada, um, Canadian, you know, the reasons why they got into Canada and couldn't do it for a little bit. Um, kind of interesting, but I'm not going to focus as much on that. Um, so here, here you can see where, uh, in February, 1988, Ponder, Ponderosa was sold to Metro Media. Now you can see here that essentially, if you look at the timeline, Ponderosa, so Metro Media acquired Ponderosa first, and then the next year essentially acquired its competitor, its main competitor, Bonanza. Now they're both under one roof. Um, and so you can see here, they talk a little bit more about that. And they were kind of united under, they, they kind of reinvented the name. It was just called Metro Media Family Steakhouses. And then they sort of kept the brand separate for a while. And then after, um, I think when things started to go 
south over the years. Um, they because Metro Media, you know, we won't get into it super deep into this in this video, but one of the things that they did was they had like the Bennigans and uh, a couple of other chains that were that a lot of people you know would recognize, and they just started having some issues just across the board. They were they were undercapitalized. They they couldn't get enough money. They filed bankruptcy. Um, I think a couple of times. I was honestly, I was honestly surprised that they were even even able to survive uh, that. And uh, but they did for quite some time. So kudos to them for you know keeping things going because uh, probably about I don't know twelve or thirteen years ago, I figured it was a matter of a year or more, and they would be folding up completely. Uh, but they were able to kind of keep it together until uh, 2017. Um, you can see here it talks a little bit about where um, where they uh, were forced into uh, Chapter 7 liquidation. And so I thought that was the beginning of the end. In a lot of ways it was, right? It was, um, but, it, but they ended up kind of pulling it off for a while longer. Um, Bennigan's. Uh, they, they sold off, uh, yeah, over 300 Bennigan's and steak and ale restaurants. And I remember when that all kind of went down and cause some of those Bennigan's were fairly busy too. They were, and it just, they just kind of dropped the whole thing and it, it was kind of surprising. Um, so that uh, being said, there's a lot of reference links down here that you can dive into. Feel free to give Wikipedia, you know, a shot if you want to take a look at some of this stuff. That's just one of the resources uh, that I use. And uh, you know what? I know you get on here. Uh, you guys, have, I think everybody's probably used Wikipedia at some point. And, uh, you know, it is free, but uh, it's always good to donate, too, if, if you can, especially if you use the site a lot. Uh, I know that it's expensive to keep stuff like this up, so uh, you might consider doing that. Um, so let's see, that's the same one I just clicked into it in the other thing. So what are the other things, the other places that I go to, uh, especially if I'm looking for images, is a lot of times I'll do a search for, um, I'll do a search for, uh, on Pinterest because uh, people are just uploading all kinds of things. And sometimes you can get some, some uh, images that are hard to find in other places. So uh, let's just do a quick, okay, what are we doing? Okay, there we go. So you can see that we see a lot of the similar ones that we see on, um, you know, we do a Google search but uh, some of these are kind of interesting, like somebody's put together a bunch of different old Bonanza uh, photos, and you can see how these the roof line is the same. And I'll show you an interesting one about the one I worked in, because these were all built as Bonanzas. I mean, there's no question. Uh, there was a certain architecture. The buildings were long. They had that barn look on the front. Um, the one that I actually grew up in, so to speak, is uh, is meant to kind of look like that, but it's not really, it was never built as a bonanza. So we'll, we'll kind of take a look at that here in a second. Um, in fact, I could probably, let's see, we'll just do Decatur and see, and we probably will get, uh, yeah, there it is right there. Maybe if I can, no, I want to save it. I want to open it. Okay. So view the image. And uh, you can see how this is a long building, but it's not, it's not designed the same way, right? It's, um, it has kind of this fake facade that was added to the front of it. And uh, this is the one indicator, Illinois, that I, that I started when I was 16. Uh, the other place that I like to go to is uh, Facebook. Now, in this particular one, um, I just typed in Bonanza Steakhouse, but they went by Bonanza Sirloin Pit. And you can type in Bonanza Restaurant. There's a lot of different, you know, things, a lot of different pages that are uh, connected to them. This particular one kind of hits home because this one is of the um, 
Bonanza that was in Lincoln, Illinois. And this one just closed in the fall of 2018. And this was the last Bonanza in Illinois uh, at the time. Uh, the other thing that is interesting about this is um, uh, Brett uh, Borst that ran this, his grandparents had the one in Springfield. And the one in Springfield looked a lot like the traditional uh, Bonanza. But what's interesting about that is they actually, uh, when Jerry went to buy this in Decatur in 1966, they had uh, already opened theirs in Springfield and uh, they actually lent Jerry, I think it was like $10,000 to uh, buy inventory, uh, you know, to s essentially open up and basically lent him the money on a handshake deal. And he was, and he paid every penny back. And uh, to hear Jerry talk about that and to hear uh, Brett even recount that, it's just, that's an unheard of thing in this, in this day and age to do a handshake deal like that. But that's what they did. And it worked out, it worked out great uh, for everybody because Jerry owned this, this Bonanza. I was here actually for the very last day that we were open. It was in July of 1996. And that's when we actually closed and we were going to uh, the owners at that time. They had purchased this from uh, Jerry, uh, the business, at least uh, Jerry still owned the building, but they uh, were purchasing the, the business and then they were going to uh, drop the franchise and they were going to open this as an Italian restaurant. Uh, uh, unfortunately, that didn't actually happen. They'd lost financing and um, and they, they weren't able to do that. And so Jerry ended up. Uh, you know, let it sit until the, the pool place came in and then it all sort of worked out. But kind of an interesting uh, story, though. Not too many handshake deals that uh, go on in this day and age. Uh, but I kind of wanted to show you really this is Brett here. And Mr. B is he So if I would encourage you, if you have a Facebook account, to go look for Bonanza Steakhouse and click on this, watch the video. Some neat history there. And, and I really, the Boers family, they were all really committed to uh, Bonanza. And, uh, you know, times just change, unfortunately. And uh, this was uh, much like the old school Bonanza. They still had a lot of the wood motif. They had the big, huge salad bar. And uh, frankly, you know, their family is just a neat, they're just, uh, they're, they're neat people. And, uh, and it, it was a shame that uh, they couldn't keep it going any longer. But um, I think they're highly respected in the community and, and for everything that they, that they did. And uh, I think, you know, kudos to them for that. Um, let me move on to another uh, site that I love to use. This is actually my favorite because this is a um, this is a paid subscription, uh, and this is where I get some of the the trickier things <laughs> that I find. Uh, you know, newspaper advertisements, uh, articles, uh, things like that. Of course, are going to come out of here. Um, and uh, I would highly suggest that if you really love looking through old stuff, if you like to do genealogy or you like to do any kind of uh, just just looking up things like I do. Um, this is well worth the money. Um, to be honest, I, I forget how much I pay for this, but I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of it's, I think it's over a hundred dollars a year. Um, but you know, if you, if you really get into a lot of this stuff and you do it a lot, what's a hundred, 150 bucks, really? I mean, it's, it, and honestly, this site, I've got a couple of these subscriptions and this one is the best by far. This is a really good one. I, yeah, uh, the, 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 the way that we search, and I probably won't do a lot in this video. Um, what I, what I might do is, uh, I'll show you some things that I've clipped and, uh, let's just kind of search for Bonanza things that I've done over the years and, uh, show you how some of this stuff has come up. So you can see in 1966 when the Bonanza first opened, 
Um, you can see all of that. So it, let's see. Yeah, Jerry Hanyon, right? So, um, oh, they're playing Western music. So that's, uh, I was trying to see who. So Ralph Swickert is the, was the manager. Um, been in the restaurant business for 17 years. And let me see, I think I missed a, yeah, I guess, yeah, because it doesn't say that he owns it, but I think, I think, I think he was, I may look into that a little deeper and verify that, but anyway, okay, we'll do a, another video and show how to use this tool a little, a little bit more. But uh, I just wanted to give you an idea of sort of, you know, where, how these chains both started. You know, they had uh, at least Bonanza was over 600 locations. I think Ponderosa was more than that, um, although I haven't found that number yet. I believe Ponderosa might have even been closer to a thousand or more. Uh, so where are they at now? Well, if you click on pondbond.com, that is the official site of Ponderosa Bonanza today. And they're actually owned by, and this is uh, also outlined in the Wikipedia uh, page, that, um, let's see, Right in here. So in, in 2017, uh, Metro Media, who had been renamed, they had renamed themselves after the bankruptcy to Home Style Dining, but they had essentially sold it to Fat Brands and uh, who owns Fat Burger, Buffalo Cap. They actually own a bunch of, uh, bunch of different brands at the moment. Um, and you can click into that and kind of see everything they have. But essentially in 2017, they got kind of a new lease on life. Um, they finally got another company to acquire them. And and uh, I don't know if they're doing a lot with them. And honestly, things still don't look very good for them. Um, we're actually, uh, what we'll, we'll see here is if we jump back into the uh, website and then go into locations, this tells the story and we are down to just these that you see right here. So I think I counted 21, but there are three of them that are temporarily closed. And when you're a chain like this that has uh, temporarily closed, um, you're probably permanently closed. I mean, I'm, I'm just being honest. And that is it. As promised, here is a video from 1989 showing me flipping uh, steaks at Bonanza North in Decatur, Illinois. Do a little frying. There are certain things I love uh, about that job that I miss. So, well, there you have it, folks. I appreciate you joining today. Let me know what you think of this format. If, if you like diving in and kind of, you know, digging in as I dig in. Um, I did do a little bit of pre-work today, but if you want, uh, we can do some of these where I basically do no upfront uh, investigation and we just learn everything uh, in real time. I'd be glad to do that too. Let me know what you think. Uh, thank you very much for joining, and uh, we'll see you next time on Restaurant Rewind.